What I'd like to do uh, today is review our mission here at the Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine, uh, try to make some comments about assessing our performance, discuss our vision for the future, and then frankly we're going to spend most of our time discussing challenges and strategies, in particular uh, LCME, um, as well as a little bit about the economics of the school. What we're not going to talk about today is the health care crisis, even though that would be a really useful topic to talk about, both national and local issues. And frankly, Joe Wordhammer is probably a better person to run that discussion than I am. We're not going to talk much about GME, and here Paulette Weiner would be a far better choice. We're not going to talk too much about <coughs> Marshall Health, uh, even though we could spend quite a bit of time talking about managed care options, local partners, expanding, et cetera, and probably nearest and dearest to my heart, development of the Marshall Research Enterprise, these are topics for, uh, for another day. And uh, um, we'll, we'll hopefully have those, those presentations and discussions. Uh, I'm going to remind you that our mission is that we are a community-based Veterans Affair affiliated medical school. And I see Dr. Bro, our Associate Dean for Veterans Affairs in the audience. Thanks for coming, <coughs> Jeff. Um, we're dedicated to providing high quality medical education and postgraduate training programs to foster a skilled physician workforce to meet the unique health care needs of West Virginia and Central Appalachia. Building upon its medical education foundation, the school seeks to develop centers of excellence in clinical care, including primary care in rural underserved areas, focused and responsive programs of biomedical science, graduate study, biomedical and clinical science research, academic scholarship, and public service outreach. The school is committed to fulfilling its mission by creating a diverse and inclusive academic community that is sustained in a collegial and nurturing environment of lifelong learning. So how are we doing, right? How are we going to decide how we're doing? Well, we could use rankings, but candidly, the overall rankings of medical schools are dominated by research and the magnitude of clinical practice that one has. And, and candidly, that's really not a metric that we're going to find very, very helpful. Student performance, this is a useful metric to look at, and it's necessary, uh, but it's not the whole story. Su student satisfaction, with due respect to the students in the audience, and thank, thank you for coming, um, this is, again, useful, but not, not the whole story. And it doesn't really tell how we do in terms of adhering to our core mission. Probably we need to look at a combination of metrics to, to get a gestalt of, of just how, how we're doing. There's, there's lots and lots of wonderful things that we can be very proud of. Um, in terms of our core mission, uh, we are committed to training docs for West Virginia, and when we're doing a reasonably good job. And our GME programs, which we're not going to talk about in great detail today, they're very solid. Um, Healthcare in this region is very good, and we can really take some credit to making it good because most of the practitioners in this region come from our school. Um, we are, without a doubt, a leader in primary care and in international medicine. Our primary care departments are recognized and highly regarded. Our international medicine experiences serve as an example, and our uh, Marshall Medical Outreach, our local outreach program, is to my mind an exceptional example of altruism and community engagement. Um, and if I forget to say it later, let me say now, I'm really proud of the students, I'm proud of Chuck uh, Clements, I'm proud of other faculty sponsors for making that work. I'd also point out that we have some areas of true investigative excellence. I'd point to uh, uh, the West Virginia Emory Grant that uh, Dr. Rankin serves as the PI on, as well as some terrific rural health studies. Dr. Crespo is, 
has really put Marshall on the map. Uh, and these are just some pictures. Here's the uh, Marshall Medical Outreach in the top um, to my, uh, I guess, it's right hand side. To the right hand side of the slide is uh, Sharon Ambrose uh, being recognized for uh, her work uh, with uh, last year's trip to Honduras. And, and I'm very pleased to say that uh, we're, we now have a, we now are a chapter of the Gold Humanism uh, Society. And uh, uh, both uh, Dr. and Mrs. Dr. Gold uh, came to visit us to, to help us kick this off. In terms of our research, there's a number of uh, uh, things that we can really be proud of. Um, I point out a few pictures of some of our investigators, in particular Drs. Rankin and Niles, who chair pharmacology, physiology, and biochemistry, microbiology, respectfully. Um, and uh, I mentioned that uh, we had uh, uh, the Nobel laureate from 1999, Gunter Blobel, uh, come to speak to us. Uh, I could have filled many slides with examples of, of Marshall researchers. Um, we have very strong institutional leadership. I'm not going to go through all the names, but uh, we have strong chairs, um, a strong Marshall Health Organization, a terrific dean staff, and a number of committees that, do, that really do the work of, of the medical school. The curriculum committee, the admissions committee, and the LCME committees I'll call out as doing tremendous amounts of, of work for our school. Um, pleased that we formed a faculty council and uh, the administrative staff here is, is, is superb. Uh, I can't talk without thanking uh, Wanda and Tammy for the great work they do trying to keep me on track and it's not an easy, easy task. These are pictures of our clinical chairs and, and each of these chairs has uh, created in their department some, some clinical programs for which we can really be proud. That's uh, some of the leaders of Marshall Health, Joe Wurst, Werthammer, our, our CMO, uh, Buffy Hammers, our CEO, uh, Matt Straub, our CFO, and uh, uh, Josh Dorsey, our COO. I got all the C numbers right, I hope. And I'm not going to go through all the dean staff, but I do want to uh, point out the incredible work that, that Aaron McGuffin has done uh, with his colleagues to to, to really get us ready uh, for, uh, for the LCME site visit in June and uh, really catalyze uh, some of the terrific work that's been done on the curriculum development side. Uh, I want to thank Carl Gruder, uh, Bobby Miller, Paul Ferguson, and others for, for incredible efforts uh, to, to this end. Okay, well, here's the elephant in the room. The Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine was placed on probation by the LCME June 15, 2011, citing nine standards in noncompliance, one standard in compliance with the need for monitoring, and three standards in transition. <coughs> if we look at where those citations are, um, they go across the, the LCME categories, and, and I prefer to group them in terms of, of really where they question our, our commitment. Uh, several of the standards question our commitment to diversity. Um, the standards that are in green question our commitment to education. Um, some of the standards question our commitment to student well-being and student satisfaction. And one of the standards questions our commitment to scholarship. We're going to quickly go through how we're addressing each of these areas. And uh, I will say overall that it's very clear that we had a need for serious responses. And in fact, uh, this was all put in place by the previous administration, Bob Nurhood and his group did a fabulous job getting, getting things uh, going to, to develop what I expect will be a successful uh, LCME site visit this, this coming June. Um, 
One of the things that we've decided to do is to insist on transparency, and as I've told probably everybody in this audience, either publicly or privately, you can go to our LCME website and see exactly where we are in terms of our response to these citations. We've also had open interactions with the LCME, including a visit to the Secretariat uh, when the uh, um, AAMC was meeting in San Francisco, uh, a visit from the Secretariat um, in uh, late November, and we make frequent phone calls so that they probably think we're very annoying. <laughs> and this is a, uh, uh, I, I had to split it because I couldn't, I don't have a wide angle lens on my phone, uh, but uh, this is our LCME group uh, listening to uh, Dr. McGuffin explain why the uh, current form of our self-study just isn't gonna fly. Is that fair, Aaron? Probably, probably. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, with all kidding aside, tremendous amount of work is, is going into this, and uh, I'm grateful to Aaron and others for, for really a, a, a yeoman effort. So when we think about what it is we're going to do in the long term, and for those of you that are getting uncomfortable in your chairs, I promise you, we're not going to go into details, right? But there's, there's always a, a balance between what you urgently have to deal with and what you'd like to do long term. And the urgent stuff usually wins. And in our case, the urgent issue in front of us, the elephant in the room, is the LCME. Now what I propose to this group is we've got to make the organic changes we create in response to the LCME so that it really addresses our core mission and makes us a better medical school. We've got to put this hard work really to work for us in the long haul. So I propose that what we're doing is to use the LCME citations and our responses to shape us into the medical school we want to be. Going forward, we need to take advantage of our unique resources and traditions our rural location is a big part of it. We've got an incredibly supportive community, committed alumni, committed faculty, students, and staff. We need to develop a proactive approach to healthcare, and that's a topic for another day. But that's something that we're working on. Uh, Joe Werthammer, Buffy Hammers, and others at Marshall Health are, are trying to, to go outside of the box and develop ways that will actually set an example of health care delivery. And, and I say for our organization, as well as a general rule of organizations, we've got to keep our core mission central to what we do. It is very clear we've got to become more scholarly and research active. This isn't just me talking. The LCME has essentially told us exactly this. This will require raising our academic standards, and it's also going to require money. We're going to invest from the Dean's Fund, and we're going to continue to work hard to recruit new research endowments. We're going to have to grow our clinical services. We're going to have to play well with both Cabell Huntington and St. Mary's, and be inclusive with community doctors. I think working together, we can develop true centers of excellence and to my mind, that's the path to the future. I believe we have to truly excel at being student-centered. We should be killing the student satisfaction stuff. We should be hitting that ball out of the park. We have to make our student experience perfect. It really can be perfect here. And we have to address indebtedness as we're doing it. We're going to limit tuition increases to no more than inflation, and we're going to work our, our you-know-what's off to increase scholarships. The operational rules I'd suggest is transparency makes life easier. I'll commit to sharing pretty much everything I'm thinking on, on paper and even web pages. 
I remind the group that creativity comes from faculty, staff, and students. Administrators like me, not so much. And we have to draw on that creativity. And in everything we do, we should remain client-centered, student-centered, <coughs> resident-centered, patient-centered, and faculty-centered. I thank you all for your attention, and I look forward to working with all of you for a very, very long time.